small introduction, short introduction. Some studies have shown that regular children suffer from the existence of gifted siblings. And the cause of this suffering is the high esteem of the parents for the gifted sibling, or they're having extremely high expectations of their regular child. But other studies, on the other hand, claim that the existence of a gifted sibling does in fact benefit the regular child. And the benefit arises by a higher price by the mother for the regular child. So she, is, she uh, appreciates him more uh, than another mother who has only regular children. The aims of this research were to investigate the relationship between siblings in a family with a gifted child and to focus especially on the attitude of the regular child towards his gifted sibling because we found very few references about this subject. They all, you know, are, everyone is interested about the uh, gifted one. But what about the regular? Okay, so we were curious to learn more about his feelings. If he has, of course, a gifted sibling. Okay, I will, I will skip this because we already talked about it. And also about the programs because uh, we included in this research gifted children that study in special classes and regular classes once a week and enrichment courses after school day. Okay? Okay. So about our research population. It was a convenience sampling of 162 children between the ages of 8 to 16. Our experimental group was 48 pairs of siblings. At least one of them was regular and one was gifted. And it is important for you, all of you to notice, I will refer to these uh, uh, siblings as siblings in a mixed family, okay? Mixed means at least one regular and one uh, gifted. The control group included 33 pairs of regular siblings, regular families, no gifted children, no gifted child. Now, the age difference in our research did not exceed four years. Within four years, age difference. And all of them uh, studied in one, or the gifted, that were included in our uh, research in the mixed families, studied in one of the previously mentioned, mentioned programs, special class or enrichment center or uh, after school uh, course. Our research, research questions were, to what extent does a regular child's attitude to his sibling, gifted sibling, differ from a regular child's attitude towards his regular sibling? So what is new, what is different in mixed family, in a mixed family? The second one was, to what extent is the age difference between siblings related to the attitude of the regular child towards his or her gifted? You see, as I told you, we, were, we focused on the point of view of the regular child. And what connection exists between sibling gender differences and the interrelationships inter in the mixed family, meaning does it matter if I am, for instance, the gifted and my sibling is I am a girl and he is a boy, or if both of us are girls or both of us are boys? So at the beginning, it was a qualitative stage. Uh, ten in-depth interviews were conducted in order to examine different aspects of the relationship between the regular and the gifted sibling. In each family, we in interviewed one of the parents and the gifted child and an ungifted sibling. 
which was the nearest in his age to the gifted. Okay? And from these interviews, we uh, went to the other stage, which was the call. Uh, uh, one minute. First of all, okay, about the interviews. It's important before I'm going to the next stage, which was quantitative. Uh, they were told that the research deals with various aspects of relationship between siblings. Not a word about giftedness, okay? They had no idea that it has to do anything with giftedness. They thought only, okay, relationship between siblings. This is it. And the insights from these interviews led us to select and adapt the questionnaire, okay? The quantitative stage. Okay, about the questionnaires, uh, it was, they were derived from SRQ questionnaire, which is siblings relation questionnaire, uh, by Foreman and Bormester, 1985, and it was, of course, validated and adapted to the Israeli scene. And the siblings, both the regular and the gifted, answered the questionnaires independently, without help of their parents or anyone, and anonymously. And again, in this phase, they had no idea that it had anything to do with giftedness. Only interrelationship between siblings. Okay, so let's see part one, part A of the questionnaire. It was a, co a closed questionnaire uh, with nine, uh, 29 statements. And these statements investigated jealousy, competitiveness antagonism, friendship, support, guidance, and wish to be like a sibling. Each statement was graded by the participant on a Likert scale of four steps. One means almost never, and four means almost always. Remember that. Okay, and for instance, statement, one of the statements, I'm giving some examples. My brother or sister and I used to quote, okay, the participant had to decide whether it is one, two, three, or five. I am very proud of my brother slash sister. Sometimes I think that my sibling is better than me. Okay, so these are only examples for, from the first part of the questionnaire. Part B was an open questionnaire with 15 sentences to be completed. For instance, when I get a good mark, my sibling says, and the participants had to complete the sentence, okay? When I study for an exam, my sibling, and part C was a personal data questionnaire of both siblings and each participant had to fill his own details and his siblings, because then we matched. It was, you know, uh, like gender, age, grade, school. Analysis of part A uh, was carried out by two-way ANOVA and T-test, compared between the way regular children relate to their gifted siblings in these families, and the way regular children relate to their regular siblings in the control group in the regular families. Our independent variables were family type, whether it was mixed or regular, gender compatibility, whether they were identical or different, and the age difference, up to two years or more than two. Part B, remember the sentences they had to complete? So the completed sentences were classified into positive, negative, and indifferent relationship. For instance, a positive relationship was like this. When I study for an exam, my sibling says, there is no doubt I will succeed. That means I have positive attitude toward my, sis my, my sibling, right? A negative uh, attitude might be, when I study for an exam, my sibling says that I am going to fail. And in different relationship, 
It's like, when I study for an exam, my sibling says nothing. Okay? These are only examples, of course. Analysis of part B, uh, the categories were defined according to the sentences completions, like arrogance, aggressiveness, etc. And quantitative comparisons were made between the attitudes of regular children in mixed families and those in regular families. And then, from part B, we also uh, had results about mutual relationship in mixed families. So in part B, we had some information also about the feelings and the attitudes of the gifted one. It was not the focus of this research, but yes, we received some data. Okay, results. First, regular family versus mixed family. Let's see. Uh, regarding mutual support between siblings, okay? You can see. For instance, a, a statement like, my brother and I give one another mutual support in personal matters. You can see, I, I can't show here, you will have to see it, that the regular child reports on a feeble mutual support, okay? Less mutual support between him and his gifted sibling as compared to the regular child with the regular sibling. In regular family, you can see 2.7, but in mixed family, and it's also, again, from the point of view of the regular child, the regular child who has a, a gifted sibling, 2.3. Regular child who has a regular sibling, 2.7. The, the difference is significant. Now, a sentence like, what I most dislike in my sibling is, uh, regular children in mixed families dislike the arrogance of their siblings six times more than the regular children in regular families. It is not very surprising. I mean, if I have a gifted sibling, well, I, I, uh, I see him, I perceive him as a, a little bit arrogant. He's gifted and he thinks he's better than me. I wish I had Mm -mm, like my sibling has. What do you think? A regular child who has a, reg a, a gifted sibling, what will he want? What do you think he wants to have like he's gifted? Intelligence. Great. So regular children in mixed families have longing for intellectual skills twice as much as regular children in regular families. Right? Makes sense. Not a big surprise. Now, Negative parents' attitude, following a quarrel with my siblings from the point of view of the regular child. Okay, in families, it's very common, you know, those who have more than one kid, they quarrel. He started, he took my book, he ruined my, I don't know, my painting. Okay, it's normal. And then parents react, okay? And we asked about the negative reaction of the parents. How much do you suffer from the negative reaction of your parents? So what we saw that in regular families, okay, regular children, they complain, 61% of them complain that their parents blame them, okay? And 44% say, not parents, mother. Sure, well, father reads newspaper, he doesn't really care. But mothers, yes, we have to. Come on, why did you do that? Why? Okay, so 44 complain that the mother is not okay. But if, if we look inside mixed families, we see only 39 regular children complain that their parents uh, uh, had a negative attitude towards them and blamed them after the quarrel, and 26 of them say it's mother, meaning that in, re in, in mixed families, somehow the regular child has a protection. It's better from him. You can see this, no? So now we check the readiness of a regular child to learn from his sibling as depending on the birth order. Now remember, we are dealing with the regular child, and 
okay, I'll skip here and I'll, I'll get to the results that I conclusion because I see you are already a little bit tired. A regular child in a regular family is ready to learn from his sibling if his sibling is older than him, normal. If I'm the young and my sister or brother are older, fine, I'm ready to learn from, from, from him, okay? But if I am the old and my sibling is young, no, thank you, he has nothing to teach me, no, right? But, and this was surprising a little bit, in mixed families, it didn't matter whether the sibling, the gifted sibling was younger than me or older than me, I would anyhow be ready to learn from him. Now, we can see here uh, that it, it's interesting here, the blue line is small age differences. And the pink one is great age differences. And as we can see in mixed families, okay, the regular child reports on stronger mutual care when the age differences is greater. So if one child is gifted and the other one is regular, it's better if the age differences are bigger. And in regular families, it's the opposite, okay? In mixed families, it's not good if one is gifted and the other is regular. The, it's not good when they are, you know, very close in the age. It is tense. And on the other hand, in regular families, it's better when they are close in age. And now here it's, uh, it deals with friendship ties. Again, in mixed families, the greater the age difference, the better the friendship. In regular families, it doesn't matter. And the same we saw with frequency of arguments, okay? In mixed families, when the age differences are, gra are greater, less arguments, less calls. In regular families, they call anyhow. Now about mutual interrelationships, a little bit from the point of view of the gifted also. Okay, he has also something to say and some data about it. Now, for instance, there was a statement, my sibling gets more attention from our parents. You know, when there are two or more, eh, he gets more attention than me, no, he gets more, okay. Now, we can see that gifted a gifted child claims that his regular sibling gets more attention from the parents and that was a surprise because we were sure that when you have a gifted child, hmm, you give him all the attention. No, we saw that no, he feels worse. He is not satisfied. The, the, the gifted says, no, my regular brother, my regular sister received more uh, attention from their parents. Okay? Now, when we ask gifted children in mixed families, we, we, we saw that they want twice more than the regular siblings, they want friends, they need friends. And again, you, you raise this topic, you raise this topic, I think. Yes, somehow uh, gifted children, not all of them, but has difficult, have difficulties in making friends and they are jealous regarding their regular sibling. Uh, another thing, they, the gifted children want more physical fitness. Twice more as regular siblings. Again, it's, it's, it's not only, I would say, I mean, it, it, it has something to do with it. They, they, they need, they want to show that they are physically, you know, fit. Uh, because it means I'm not a geek. I mean, not in glasses and you know, like this. If they need it, they want it. Hmm? Pardon? Yeah. Energy level? Maybe, at least, I mean, it is important. I'm, I'm telling you also about our son. It was very important for him to be excellent in sports because he, he, he didn't want to be labeled as, as a geek, as one who always you know, only reads and, and, and learns. 
now confidence in the other sibling. So when we ask, when I feel worried, I rely on my sibling to help me. And they had to rank it from one to four. We can see a small support, a slicha, sorry, a stronger support between the regular and the gifted, according to both of them, when they belong to different genders. Okay? So in a mixed family, really, it's much easier when one is a boy and the other one is a girl. When both of them boys or both of them girls, ooh, the competition is strong. So, as I say, you can see it here also, my brother and I try to be better than one another. It is worse when they are from the same gender. In summary, the regular child in a mixed family reports on a less close relationship with his gifted sibling than a regular child in a regular family. That means that it is not easy when you have a mixed family. It's not easy. The distance between them does not seem to arise from a negative attitude of the parents to where their regular child in mixed families. We thought it would, but no, no, on the contrary. On the contrary, the regular child in a mixed family, the regular child who has a gifted sibling, seems to benefit from a more positive attitude of the parents, especially of the mother, okay, than a regular child in regular families. And maybe it is a compensation for having a gifted sibling. Means if I'm a mother and I have two children, one is gifted and the other one is regular, I try to compensate the regular. Poor, he didn't pass the test, he's not studying in a, in a special class, and he's regarded as less clever, I will compensate him. And that's a problem, that's a mistake. Because it creates bad relationship between them and the gifted feels you know, neglected. Bear it in mind. And the fi finding is reinforced by the gifted child support that, he, that the regular, his regular sibling receives more attention. It is possible, again, as I said, that the mother's effort to compensate the regular, her, her regular child makes things worse. Okay? She shouldn't interfere. The gifted children feel deprived because of their mother's attitude. Now, as I said, when the age differences between in a mixed family are small, the regular child has greater difficulties. And when they belong to the same danger, again, the difficulty is greater. And uh, I think, and this is we should think about it, that the findings of this study may be ascribed to the labeling of the gifted child as gifted. What I'm meaning to say uh, is that uh, there is always a price you have to pay. It's very good to have special programs, but you pay something. When these children are labeled, they carry a bag on their back also. And so they benefit, but they also suffer. It's not easy. I think, uh, really, that according to our results, parents of gifted children need support, need instructions. Because not only children with learning disabilities or difficulties or ADHD or Asperger or whatever, no, Asperger is not a good idea, but autism, let's say. We know that they need support, but also these parents, they need support because they can make things easier or more complicated. And thank you for your...